Welcome to Real Sense, and in this video, I'm super excited to share this little project I've been working on for a while now. Um, it's not 100% complete, but I can make a video on it now. So this is my first DIY solar generator project. So let's jump right in with the solar panels. So I got these panels online on Facebook Marketplace for $85. As you can see, here are the specs. They are 240 watt panels and I have them connected in series as you can see this is the middle panel you can see the cable going to the right panel and the other cable going to the left panel if you don't know how to connect them in series here's a diagram of how to connect them in series so the benefit of series is that it adds up the volts of the panels and here you can see the positive and the negative connected to the window and they convert to one wire and that wire connects to the charge controller so this is the entire setup so I have the charge controller the inverter, the battery in that big case, and the EcoFlow. And I'm gonna explain how each component plays its role in this power generator. So this powers my entire office. Um, if you look at my last video on the EcoFlow, um, I was only powering my work computer, my personal computer with the screens and some lights and some chargers. But now I get to power both of my personal computers, gaming PCs. Um, you can see there's two vacuums that are connected, all the lights, all the chargers, everything. So my entire office is running off solar. And again, here's each component. That's the solar charge controller. Here's the inverter, which is a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this is the EcoFlow River Pro um, that I've had for about two years now. It's been working great. And with this setup, I kind of don't plan to upgrade anytime soon because this allows me to power my entire office all day without any problems and still have power at night. All right, so here's the power line coming from the inverter and connecting to the EcoFlow, as you can see. And on the right side, you can see all the connections on the EcoFlow. So I pretty much have it from the inverter to the EcoFlow and then from the EcoFlow to the rest of the office. As you can see, I just turned off the inverter and that turns off the charging. I turned it back on and now you can see the EcoFlow charging. So this works as a, an extension to the EcoFlow. That's the way I think about it. And that was the way I was designing it. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove everything so you guys can see the batteries. As you can tell, this is a work in progress. It's not 100% finished. I do plan to put everything within that case except the EcoFlow, which, does, which wouldn't fit. So if you guys want to see that video, please subscribe. I plan to do it soon, but the more subscribers I have, the more motivation I get. So wink, wink. All right, so here's the batteries. They are uh, from scooters, from those electric scooters. And I got these off Jehu Garcia's shop. So that's jack35.com. He has a YouTube channel. It's very well known for batteries and all kinds of DIY battery projects. I love his channel. I'm a big fan. Okay, so here are some packs that I took out to show you guys and I connected them in parallel and here's a diagram of how to connect it in parallel. So all the negatives go into one wire, all the positives go into another wire and parallel has the benefit of keeping the voltage the same and that's going to allow the charge controller to control all the packs as one battery and in this case it's going to be a 36 volt battery so here's a sample of one of the cables that i made uh, as you can see all the black wires are connected into one all the red wires are connected into one um, and then there's the xt60 connectors that connect to the batteries i pretty much made all the connections myself even on the batteries and the batteries have their own bms so that means that there's an input and an output. And now I'm gonna connect the back um, and show you guys which one is the input, which one is the output. All right, so you can see each side has a cable. So this thin wires here, that's the input and the thicker wires on the other side are the output. So the left side is the input, the right side is the output. All right, so here's a battery in the specs. So it's a 36 volt with 13 amp battery, and that makes a capacity of 460 watt hours. Um, I have seven of them. So that makes the estimate capacity to be 3.2 kilowatt hours. Okay, so quick warning for everybody. This battery, I killed it 
I soldered the connections the wrong way and it fried. Um, so please um, do this at your own risk. Um, don't just follow some random guy on YouTube. So do your own research and remember safety first because these things will catch fire. And yeah, this is the warning. Warning. Okay, so we're back at the box and I want to show you guys that this long cable is the input connector and this cable connects to all the input uh, connectors that I made to each battery's input and these two are for the output and they lead to the inverter as you can see here. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how I connect the batteries that I took out. Here are the two connectors, one is for the input, the other is for the output. And I made it this way because I wanted to have the flexibility to expand later on. So I think for now 3.2 kilowatts, it's more than enough. All right, so here are the batteries and you can see the thin cables are the input and the thicker cables are the output. All right, so I'm gonna connect everything again, but before I do, I wanna show you again the MPPT charge controller. It's from Victron Energy, and it's kind of expensive, but it's well worth it. So here we have the battery and the PV input, which is photovoltaic input from the solar panels. And as you can tell, all the connectors are XD60s. Um, it makes everything so much easier. They're really good for these DIY projects. All right, so I'm gonna connect the battery and I'm gonna connect the solar panels. All right, so that lights up the light on the top, indicating that there's power going through. All right, so to complete the setup, here's the EcoFlow, and I'm gonna connect it to the inverter. All right, so that's how the setup looks. And we're gonna look at how much wattage I'm doing right now. So this is the Victron app, and it lets you connect to the charge controller through Bluetooth. All right, so we are doing 533 watts and you can see the solar and the battery charging states. All right, so if we can go to the history and check out how it's been doing. As you can see, I typically do more than one kilowatt hour. It depends on the day, how much sunlight there is. Um, but typically um, I do more than one kilowatt. On really sunny days, I do almost three kilowatts. So that's the entire battery setup. I can charge it in one day. And here, if we go to trends, we can see a live readout of the voltage, the amperage, and the wattage of the panel and the battery. So you get a live readout of everything with this app. And that's why I chose this uh, solar charge controller because it has so many advanced features. And if you guys want me to do a review on the charge controller, Please hit like, subscribe, and comment down below. Um, I'll definitely do one if you guys want, so let me know. Okay, so here's an issue I've been having. I get some high voltage in the mornings. I don't know why. It used to not happen before, but now it's happening. Um, it started about a month ago, um, so I need to check that out. And if you guys have any idea as to why that might be happening, please comment down below. I would appreciate it. And as you can see, the lifetime total I've done 391 kilowatt hours since I installed charge control. All right, so maybe you guys have been wondering why I keep using the EcoFlow, and here's why. Because I love to have the remote control to turn everything off or on if I needed to. And since EcoFlow uses Wi-Fi, I can do this from anywhere. I don't even have to be home. I can check up on the system and change the power settings, turn it off, turn it on. Um, so yeah, that's really convenient. Okay, so here on the settings, you can see that I have it charging up to 75% and I have a slow charging. Those settings, I change them to keep the battery healthy and running for a long time. All right, so here's one last thing I wanna show you guys. Um, so I drained the EcoFlow a little bit at around 46%. I'm gonna turn off the slow charging and that makes it charge really quick. Um, and you can see the charging, which is the number on the top. It keeps rising really quick. So it's 500, uh, 600, yeah, 650, 700. So yeah, 
it charges super quick. So any anytime I want to top it off really quick, I have that ability. All right, so that's about it for this video. Hope you liked it. I didn't go into details on how much money I spent because I want to leave that for another video. And I also didn't do a capacity test and that's going to be on that other video. So please stay tuned, subscribe so you can get it, hit the bell notification and keep a lookout. So thank you for watching. Bye.